Welcome back to Rubrics, a St. Timothy's podcast where we talk about scripture and current events and anything else that comes to mind. And today, uh, like anybody online in the Anglican Twitter sphere, uh, the National Cathedral is on our minds. Um, and there's been, you know, a lot that has happened and been reversed in the past few days, but it gives us a good opportunity to uh, talk about a word that can be pronounced two different ways, simony or simony. Um, we discussed which way we were going to pronounce it and did not come to a conclusion, so we'll see what comes out of our mouth. But simony um, is a misuse of money that we'll talk about, and we'll talk about what happened at the National Cathedral, we'll talk about some churches in England, and kind of use it to springboard a broader conversation about the supernatural and about sacramentals and, and spiritual things. Um, but before we dive in, how is your preparation for Advent coming? This Sunday is, is the first Sunday. Non-existent. I was, um, I was happy today. Um, we have this green set at Mass, and it's, it's nice. It just doesn't fit great. And I was um, a little happy that Saturday will be the last time I'll have to wear it for a while. My preparation has been not... Um, well, it is spiritual. I mean, the... Um, I mean, I think that Advent has a definite penitential character to it, mm-hmm. and I think I think it should. And so, what I started impromptu the day after Thanksgiving was to see if anyone in the parish wants to be a part of a of a sort of a diet club, yeah. basically. Although not everyone who's in it is dieting. Wellness club, yeah. wellness club, health club. But I think most of the people who are in it are looking to lose a little mm-hmm. weight, especially after Thanksgiving, and. Um, I in in the past, Advent has been a time for me to to really, in in some ways more so than even Lent. Although I keep um, a regular, um, you know, try to. I mean, obviously Ash Wednesday, Good mm-hmm. Friday, fasting, and and trying not to have anything that's terribly extravagant yeah. during the season. But Advent for me is um, even. Um, I'm more intentional about it because it's so counter to all mm-hmm. that's around. Because all the Christmas parties, all the yeah, there's all this sort of stuff out there. But um, you know, as you look toward the end of the year, everyone wants to have a new fitness you know mm-hmm. regime, go to the gym, and all that. And um, so for me, my that's been something that's been um, um, you know in the years past. But I'm looking forward to Lent. It's a short. It's the sh- one of the shortest Lents. We can Advent. have. I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, shortest Advent. <laughs> yeah, Christmas um, Eve is is Advent, Advent four. four, and that's challenging. And um, I was actually saw um, 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 Marcus Walker, who's the vicar of Great Saint Bart's in London, I think the oldest parish mm-hmm. in in London, because in the, in the Church of England and especially in city parishes where they have tons of carol services mm-hmm. for schools and guilds yeah. and whatever else. He already has his Christmas trees up in the church while it's still green on yeah. the altar because it's just so short. Because yeah. his carol services will start um, mm-hmm. probably Sunday, whatever Saturday. But yeah, but no, nothing in terms of. Uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, and I'll make the transition when it happens. But you know, it it comes up on you. Yeah, it does. And if you're listening to this, uh, a, a bit of encouragement on Christmas Eve, go to church twice. Go for Advent 4, then come back for yeah. Christmas Eve. Those are not interchangeable. We, you know, try to make it easy on, on us, and we're just going to have one service in the morning for, for Advent 4, and then, you know, our normal two for Christmas Eve. Um, but uh, it's not technically an either-or. It's, no, it's we'll a both say, and. We'll say this again. Um, and you have, obviously, you have James now, so you have a family, children. That's right. I have, I have the same, and... We understand the importance of family traditions mm-hmm. and domestic traditions. We understand completely what Christmas means mm-hmm. in a household, what it means especially for children, the joy, the magic, mm-hmm. all the all the things that they, they love about it. But most every parent I know um, finds a moment of just irritation at the at the commercialization yeah. of, of everything. It's nonstop. And then oftentimes sort of the lament of how um, greedy children can mm-hmm. be, you know, opening up all the presents and then still looking and disappointed when the presents are out. And if you're wanting to find some backstop against that, 
um, come to church on Sunday morning mm -hmm. on, on Advent 4, and then come again for Christmas Eve. Or if you don't come Christmas Eve, come Christmas Day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to sort of make that statement to the family, you're not sacrificing an awful lot of time. No. You still can have your dinner. Yeah. You still can watch Christmas Vacation. You can still do whatever that you're used to doing. But to be able to save it, really, yeah. save the experience from devolving into what it frequently becomes, mm -hmm. um, come to church. Yeah. Come to church uh, with sincerity and an open heart and gratitude, mm -hmm. and, and, and let that save, save the celebration. Yeah. I mean, all your favorite you know, Christmas carols probably have their roots in, in church um, and in you know, Jesus Christ and his birth. And you know, we love to sing about it and, and hear songs about it, so, so come in and actually experience it. Um, what is your favorite Christmas movie, and what's your favorite Advent song? Um, you mentioned Christmas Vacation. Is that the one you always watch? Well, I always watch it. Um, I think my favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've never seen it. No, have you not? No, really? I, I no. know the joke, but no, um, I've never seen it. I, I mean. I actually like Home Alone. I watched that the I other like day, Home Alone. I remember and I was that. just thinking as we were talking about going to church on Christmas, the church that Macaulay Culkin goes into is an Episcopal church. Oh, is it? Yeah, absolutely, and with the beautiful choir rehearsals. What church is it? I can't. I used to know. It's in Chicago. It's Chicago. Okay. Um, but if you, if you, yeah, it's a lovely little scene where he kind of escapes the. You know, I was telling. Bustle. I was telling my wife that, and 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 my daughter, who is home over Thanksgiving, and it was on, and we watched it. Is that Shockingly, now that I think about it, Home Alone has a 100% positive presentation of Christianity. It's yeah, it's great. Um, there's a great line where the old man with the shovel um, talks about how you're always welcome at church, yep. and um, and how for both of them, the church became a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And for Macaulay Culkin, it was a sanctuary. He hid in the in the nativity mm -hmm. scene. He went to the church, you know, before yep. sort of his big uh, showdown yep. with them. Um, um, the music was beautiful, but if you and it, and it presents it as like a beautiful escape, from, it is from it's, the commercialization it's, no, it's that, of the world. It's yeah. that absolute oasis, that sanctuary. But if you if you pause your video when they're sitting in the pews, there's clearly the Book of Common Prayer. Oh, really? And the eighty two hymnal. Cool. Oh, absolutely. Um, cool. But I my I think my favorite Christmas movies is. Um, there are two. One is The Bishop's Wife with Cary Grant and David Niven. You need Never to watch this. It's about the Episcopal Bishop of New York, who's David Niven, who is um, was the very first James Bond in Casino Royale mm. before Sean Connery, and um, Loretta Young. So it's the Bishop of North. It's the young Bishop of North Carolina. I mean, in North Carolina of New York. New York. Um, who is under the pressure to build this new cathedral? Mm -hmm. And there is uh, Mrs. Hamilton, who is the the patroness of the building and, and of the of the of the funds and building it, and she's controlling him and making demands. And he's really lost sight of what ministry is. Mm -hmm. He's lost sight of joy. He's just now become a grumpy manager. And um, um, Cary Grant is an angel who comes, who is sent to basically flirt with his wife <laughs> to make. Um, to make the bishop jealous so that he will reset his priorities. Mm. And it's a charming movie. I love yeah. Cary Grant. I love those old movies. Uh, there's some good themes in there. And the other one, which is a very good one, um, um, based in the church, is Bing Crosby and the Bells of St. Mary's. Um, and if you haven't seen that one, that's also a good a good thing. So I like, uh -huh. I like those two. What about Advent Song? Um... O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, I think, is the one that just sort of is, becomes an earworm, and yeah. I, I hum it all the time. I mean, I, yeah. lo I, mean, I love Lo He Comes that, and Clouds mine. Descending. I, uh, I love them all, but, yeah. but um, I, will, I will hum, because um, I, I love the antiphons. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and what's interesting about the antiphons is we here, we actually, this sounds... This sounds um, this sounds cocky, but we, we, we use them. We use them <laughs> in its proper form, yeah. you know, before and after the Magnificat on those days. So we understand its liturgical role mm -hmm. and we meditate on them. So, yeah, yeah I like that hymn. I, I'm a sucker for the classics. Charlie Brown Christmas, um, I think, is probably my favorite. And then I always watched Muppet Christmas Carol growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Christmas Carol, but the Muppet version. Mm -hmm. Some people hate the Muppet, some people love them, but the music's good. Um, and I always, I always watched that one. 
but um, I've just been playing Low He Comes on on repeat for James. Yeah. Um, that's that's the only Advent music he's heard There's, so far. <laughs> there is a very good. I have Sirius XM radio in mm-hmm. the car, and there is a channel called Holiday Pops, and um, Pops. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all right now um, Advent sacred music. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And so I listen to that to avoid a constant barrage of yeah. rocking around, rocking the, Christmas around the Christmas tree. tree yeah. And, you know, all those other ones, um, Mariah Carey. I want so a hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> There's that. Let's talk about the cathedral. Yeah, let's talk about the cathedral. So t- tell us, um, and the people listening, briefly what went down over the past, gosh, two well, days, I guess. Yeah, Three days. and I am reluctant, you are reluctant, we are reluctant for good reason to comment on churches that are do not share our address. It, it's, right. it's a bad look most of the time, and we don't. Mm-hmm. We, we, we really don't comment on church events or mm-hmm. controversies for the most part, mm-hmm. especially the decisions of other clergy. Right. Because, I mean, frankly, I, I, would, I don't know if I want that um, pressure on me. Yeah, that, that magnifying glass yeah. flipped around, and we don't want to throw stones if we live in a glass house. Right. Also, grace should abound. Mm-hmm. And um, as I said in, a, in an Instagram reel yesterday, context is king. Mm-hmm. We weren't, th- I mean, we don't know the, the details, the context, mm-hmm. uh, all the facts, except these seem to be. What what is out there is pretty clear and pretty straightforward. Yeah. So is, you know we wouldn't comment if somebody accidentally does Advent no, one last no. Sunday. That's that's a genuine mistake. I, I'm just giving I'm giving that disclaimer that we don't like doing this. But this was really so far beyond the pale. It was that, um, and frankly, the reaction has been somewhat universal, but not completely. Yeah, and I find that yeah. interesting. So what happened? And apparently they've been doing this now for 14 yeah, years. I don't know how it took this long and, to, to and, for people well, to realize. I, yeah, we're all we're all looking at our phones constantly yeah. now and seeing these things. The National Cathedral, the Washington National Cathedral, the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul in Washington D.C., the seat of of both the Diocese of Washington D.C. and it's where the presiding bishop has mm-hmm. a seat. It's the figure. It is the figurehead of the it, Episcopal Church. It is called the National Cathedral yeah. for yeah. a reason. No yeah. one knows it by the Cathedral of Saints Peter and right. Paul. No one knows that. Um, they have, as we do on our website. Here's our Advent mm-hmm. services. Here's Christmas Eve, etc., etc., etc. Lessons and carols. The difference is, for there, they say big demand, a lot of people. Sure, it's a magnificent mm-hmm. structure, huge, um, but you have to buy a ticket to come, mm-hmm. and the tickets are... And the image is on, buy. Yeah, and the tickets are $7. Now, if this were a concert, and Yo-Yo Ma and Taylor Swift were singing mm-hmm. Lo He Comes and Clouds Descending, fine. What a what a duo to pull. <laughs> fine. Sell a ticket. Yeah. You know what? And frankly, if Taylor Swift were singing uh, with... Yo-Yo Ma playing. I'd buy a ticket. I'd buy a ticket. I, I would buy a and ticket. I w- I would, and I wouldn't think twice about it and say, good, good on you. The problem was um, the tickets were for, um, and even Lessons and Carols, I think that'd be a bad look, but fine. It's, it's not, it doesn't reach to the extent of simony that we'll talk yeah, about. Yeah, so there was a, but Christmas Eve, the it's Eucharist, mass. the Mass, you had to buy a ticket to come. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see... And this is where context mm-hmm. may... I didn't see, if you want to reserve a spot in this section and you want to buy a ticket, mm-hmm. I still don't like it, mm-hmm. but from, but it seemed it to be... It did not seem that there was any free option. Correct. It seemed to be that to get in the building, yes. you have to buy a ticket. Now, yeah. part of it for me is I've visited the cathedral several times. I've paid every single time. Um, and again, I, let's be clear. We Everyone has... a bills to pay, Mm -hmm. and we all have different means of of making ends meet. I understand that. I am not the dean. I'm not on the chapter. Don't want to be. Never will be. So I'm not trying to to, uh, Monday morning quarterback what they're doing. However, there is a dollar sign, and it has been a long time with getting in that cathedral to visit, um, so on and so forth. I'm sure you can go in and pray for free, but when I've tried, it's been difficult. It's been difficult to get through. So... Um, charging for a mass is not only a bad look, not only wrong, it is sinful. It's sinful. You cannot do that. You cannot have an exchange of this money is not, for uh, a sacrament. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. This isn't even up for debate. I mean, this has been from Acts 8 it's to not. now. It, it's, it's been not. very clear. 
So simony or simony, you and I have a different pronunciation. We're just stuck we'll with, stick it. with it. We'll stick with it. So comes from Acts chapter 8. It does. Simon Magnus, mm-hmm. a magician who was converted, baptized. He was. Following yep. um, Peter, um, but perhaps his his motivation for following them wasn't exactly pure. Yeah. So he sees this great power that the apostles have and wants it for himself and offers them a sum of money. You're mm-hmm. going, to, you're going to read a, a portion yeah, of the I'll text? Yeah, I'll read a couple of verses, and then we'll, then we'll you know, kind of get a definition of, of simony. Um, so this is Acts 8, and basically, you know, Philip is preaching, um, and the crowds are astonished at, you know, hearing him and the signs that he's doing, and he heals unclean spirits and people who are possessed and paralyzed, and there's great joy. Basically, people are freaking out, you know, with, with everything that's happening. And this man named Simon who had previously practiced magic in the city, is how verse 9 begins of Acts 8, and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he was someone great. All of them, from the least to the greatest, listened to him eagerly, saying, This man is the power of God that is called great. So then it says, But when they had believed Philip, who was proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. After being baptized, he stayed constantly with Philip, and was amazed when he saw the signs and great miracles that took place. So, Simon is converted, baptized, because he sees the external signs. And, you know, that's not, we don't necessarily blame him for that. Um, We don't know if he believed that Jesus Christ was God. He sees what Philip's doing and is converted. He believed. That's how Jesus converted people, with, with miracles and signs. But what ends up happening is Peter and John are there. They lay hands on people, and people receive the Holy Spirit. And it says, Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. And then Peter rebukes him and says, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's gift with money. You have no part or share in this, for your heart is not right before God. Repent therefore of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord, that if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and chains of wickedness. And Simon is scared and says, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. And thus ended the story, and there's no epilogue to it. There's not. Uh, Church Simon, tradition says that he didn't really turn from his ways. No, there's. Uh, I, I learned that there are apocryphal sources. Um, I think like Acts of Peter, and Simon um, challenges Peter. And levitates and flies around to try to say, you know, I'm more powerful than you. As one does. Yeah, I I mean, I think some of the early church fathers say he was the founder of the Gnostics. Others just say Mm -hmm. he was a Gnostic. Um, But yeah, he very very short verses. Um, I'm going to put up a picture of. um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name, but this is an image of um, Peter's conflict with Simon Magnus, and you'll see Simon. To the left Avanzino of Peter. Nucci. Yeah, there you go, from 1620. But Simon Magnus, if you're watching, he is here on the left of Peter in, in the black. And you see um, him basically offering money. Um, and, you know, the, the the painter obviously has depicted him as kind of oh, it, wearing black over in the shadows and, and, you know, attempting to exchange money for Peter, who is laying his hands on someone. And they are basically full of light. And we, we see... Is that the dove at the very top of the picture? Yeah, the spirit descending. Um, but, you know, a nice visual depiction of kind of what's happening in the story. I need to apologize. I've been saying Simon Magnus um, without thinking. Simon Magus. Uh, I think I, I, that, that might be a typo on uh, my part. Okay. This is Magus on the... I think it's Magnus. Okay. I'm not sure, though. Now now you're, now you're making me second guess. Um, but that's not necessarily his name. I think that's another word for magician. Yes, you know, absolutely. Axe just says... Yeah, yeah. Act- just says Simon. Um, but what I love about this story is, and I'm going to take this off of the screen, is that Simon um, actually believes that it's powerful. I mean, the simony, simony is not just um, converting the supernatural to something natural. It's an attempt to equate the two. I mean, he, yes. he actually sees the spirit descending. He says, this is better magic than I've ever been able to do. And, and he's almost a little sympathetic all he knows is money. Yeah. I mean, he has money, and he just knows that's how I get things. Where everything else so is So I see something I want, so money is the way we do it. And, and we're very um, much in that same realm a lot, too. You know, we 
see something we want and we think, how much does it cost? How can I have it? But how the can sacred's I not for sale. That's right. And that's the thing, right? And so throughout the history of the church, this, um, you know, the sin has been usually associated with buying an ecclesiastical office. Yeah. You purchase, you purchase the right to be the rector of St. Timothy's. You purchase mm-hmm. the bishopric the bishop. of, of mm-hmm. Raleigh, of North Carolina. Um, you, you, you come about an ecclesiastical office, which has sacramental mm-hmm. responsibility by a financial transaction. Mm-hmm. However, it's not just that. It's really kind of any exchange of a temporal good for a for a, a spiritual uh, reality, yeah. buying sacraments. And so while the National Cathedral, I'm certain, was not saying, let's profit on the Eucharist, that is what was going on here. Yep. And I think the problem is, and I, I think that what I would have liked to have seen is... And I would like to think that I would like to think this is how I would respond when one messes up, which happens mm-hmm. frequently in life, is to say, that was really, really, really dumb. Mm-hmm. And I completely see how that looks. Whatever my intent was is irrelevant. That's what it looked like. And so I'm sorry. Yep. Um to, to go back and say, it's really a processing fee for the online tickets. No one believes one ticket is $7 for processing. I mean, no one believes no, that. No. And um, no one also really denies the fact that very large cathedrals with hundreds or thousands of people may need some sort of um, crowd System. control to make sure that you're, you're not violating fire code. I mean, yeah. that's fine. But when you go to places that do this, Elsewhere, it's for free. You just mm-hmm. get a ticket, so mm-hmm. you have a spot. And um, it's also fine to say, if you would like to help defray the cost of this, here's an optional thing you can do. Yep. But don't, Which is what it says now. But it still says a processing fee. Correct. For what? And Correct. I just don't think that's, that's, that's wise. And I, I mean, I would be much more willing to go to a, a beautiful liturgy, be moved by the proclamation of the gospel, and then by that movement, be be compelled to to offer to give, something, yeah. recognizing that that this is a great gift that's been given to me, mm-hmm. and out of my free gift, I'm offering it. And I guarantee you, they would likely collect more money yeah. Yeah. than charging seven dollars for a ticket. Fee, you know, why yeah. would you? I mean, just practically, why would you now put something in the plate when you've already paid thirty five? I yeah. paid fi- family yeah. of five thirty five bucks don't to go pass in. An offering plate. Of course, they don't. And it's just like how nowadays we are so irritated. Everything is now paid by like square readers. Mm-hmm. And you know, one comedian once said, when he sees a square reader, what that tells him is he's now going to tip for something he's never tipped for in his entire <laughs> life. You know, I went to a basketball game and bought some Dippin' Dots ice cream. I had to do a tip. Yeah. I'm not going to not do a tip. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but like, what are we doing? So it's just that kind of cynicism that builds in. But so the other thing that came out of the cathedral, which is almost if not worse, is now re- requiring um, a pledge card to be baptized. Mm-hmm. And that is also textbook simony. Yeah, and I've, I, again, I understand that if you're going to say, if you want, and I under, St. Timothy is not a tourist destination, mm-hmm. right? So it's not as if people are coming out of the woodwork to, to, to for basically to have this church as the yep. backdrop for their photo. I, I am sympathetic to the dean and chapter of trying to say that for those who are seeking sacramental ministrations in this community, our desire is for you to be a part mm-hmm. of this community, which is what is intended. Yeah. We don't want to baptize someone and then and then move them off, you know, and then let them think that they're now a free agent and can do yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, so I understand that intent, but to require a a pledge. Is is just not only the the wrong look. Is I don't know how you justify that yeah. at all. And it's not the same as saying if you want to participate in church governance, there needs to be some evidence that you are connected to the community, which is what our canons because require. Participating in church governance is not a sacramental act. Correct. Ap- that that's the main yeah. difference. And people are equating the two that you yeah. can't run for vestry unless you give. Um, yes, the running for vestry is not a sacrament or a sacramental. Right. That's right, and that all. is actually the church's to 
possess. I mean, that, that is the community is to possess. Yeah. Yeah. Nor, possess the but, sacrament. But nor is, it, nor is it a, 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 a toll tax yeah. to, to be a part in church Sacrament. governance. Is you, have to be, you have to show evidence that you are committed to the Christian life, which involves right. stewardship, and there's no dollar amount to that. Now, if you have two vacation homes and you pledge 20 bucks a year, that doesn't count. You're going to get some questions. You get some questions, and you should. If you uh, have nothing to your name and you're struggling and and you give a dollar a week that may be a sacrificial gift yep. that's a whole yep. different thing and um so i don't know why people just it's just so bad and it and it it, it gives the church a look that, and some degree is justified a lot of ways is justified mm-hmm. that all we care about is money yep and yep. in the parish nickeling and diming people everything trying to and, get a christmas and we we can you know, this podcast is not the place to really litigate or expose sort of the frustrations of of diocesan realities and national church realities and things like that, where it does always seem to kind of go mm-hmm. back to the money. And the Episcopal Church as a whole is incredibly wealthy. Mm-hmm. And I think this, all the talk that we have in the church about what sort of is our root sin that keeps us mm-hmm. from really flourishing as Christians— like on the Bishop Rodman's um, priorities now is race. It's mm-hmm. a laudable goal. I think if you want to get really to the root of it, what is the number one um, thing that keeps us from flourishing is is the love of money mm-hmm. and that desire to have Which it. Is probably for most people. It is. It is. And so, I mean, I'm glad that the National Cathedral has said that everything is for free, mm-hmm. but it, it is a little bit of, I don't want to say gaslighting, but... But it's not. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Oh, and so I, I just, I'm, I'm really dumbfounded by it, and I'm, and I'm sort of dumbfounded at, at the justification that people are giving to it. It's, it's, for crying out loud, it's, it's Christmas Eve. It's, it's the poverty of Jesus Christ in a manger. Um, no room in the inn. I mean, I just, I stop being uh, Scrooge. I just, <laughs> the juxtaposition the, of, the, of those two things mm-hmm. just could not be. I mean, this is, it's like a bad movie. I mean, it's not, it's not even hard to. Picture the worst case scenario, which is an uh, exceptionally poor person on Christmas Eve night. Sorry. Seeing the warm lights, going yeah. to the church and saying, ticket please? Yeah, sorry. I mean, come on. It's awful. It's I awful. found a, a good... Uh, and, but I've heard, listen, people I know who, who know the dean, so he's a very, very good yeah. good priest. Yeah. And so um, I don't know the... have no don't, idea who I don't. I don't, I don't know him. Well, I mean, unfortunately, he's the dean, he is, right? He has to answer so, for it. Yes, but. and, and I, we're not impugning anyone in... But, I, but we are saying, come on, what what happened? Mm-hmm. How is this possible? All job. Yeah. I found a good book, uh, literally just called A History of Simony in the Early Church. Um, and they kind of go through how it was examined and, and defined. And they give a pretty succinct definition that I think is, is helpful to really understand what are we talking about here? And, and the book defines it as the intended or real exchange of a supernatural good or a natural good annexed thereto for something that is temporal. Basically, supernatural goods like sacraments or natural goods that are annexed thereto, like things that are made sacramentals like holy water, trying to exchange that for a temporal good um, or even, you know, ordination, trying to exchange that for a temporal yeah. good. And the reason that that is so problematic is because... Um, it's it's, and, and this is the problem with with money in general is that it uh, puts a number, a quantity amount on something that cannot be quantifiable. Um, how much does a baptism cost? You can't quantify that. It's infinite worth. And when you start charging money for it, you're saying that this equals this. There is somehow, and and, and practically we understand this. If you have ten dollars, you say that could buy me. Um, a, a meal for McDonald's, or it could buy me a coffee mug. A coffee mug and a meal for McDonald's have nothing in common. I mean, those are to- two, two totally different things, but when you put a price on them, all of a sudden you can start comparing them. And it's, that's why simony is so problematic, because you start comparing the Eucharist to a Happy Meal. Well, they both cost $10, so you know they kind of share characteristics. And that, and that is so problematic in how we view the grace of God. Um, it's also problematic because it gives the impression that the seller is in the possession of it. Correct. The seller of, you know, the, the baptism is in the possession of God's grace at baptism, and that's not true. I mean, clergy are dispensers of it, administrators of it, caretakers of it. We don't possess it. We don't own it. it and furthermore, I was telling you that I read a commentary in the Code of Canon Law of 1983, 
wonderful, helpful line that said that you know simony is is to equalize the temporal and the, right. and the sacred. Yeah. So, I think that I I don't I I can't imagine the clergy at the cathedral think this. I actually don't th- I don't think they do. But yeah. But the impression is. You and I would be willing to pay, and we would find seven dollars for a Yo Yo Ma Taylor Swift concert. To pay be a lot a, more than that to be a deal. Oh yeah. So now you've equalized a Taylor Yo-Yo Swift Ma. concert and the Holy Eucharist. Yep, that's exactly right. And that, it's that equation that happens when we put a price tag on. And things. I and I wonder if people who go who go uh, are thinking, yeah, this is a performance. This is a cultural performance yeah. with good music and rituals, and it's a it's a drama. And there, of and, course, I would and pay so, yeah, absolutely. Dollars. Why not? Yeah, and, and that really is the issue, is what it trains us to think about the sacrament. It trains us to view it as a transaction, to think of it as a performance, as like unto a performance at the symphony and then you start saying well seven bucks is kind of a steal i would pay 20 bucks for the symphony 50, 70 bucks for the symphony and this is just as good a music and and that is actually the problem um i mean and if you look up the history of of symphony in the church severe punishments for it because yes, uh, absolutely excommunication yeah uh, yeah i was looking at um not that we're advocating that no but takes it seriously. Yes. Uh, I think I think you know they basically said if you were a deacon and you did it no more ordination for you. You know, it stops the train. If you were a, a clergy and you did it, you'd be immediately suspended. And if you were a layperson, excommunication. Um it takes it seriously because this is I mean, Peter's words are not uh hey, you can't do that, but we'll figure something out. Thanks thanks for the donation. No, I mean, he's you know, says you're in the gall of bitterness and chains of wickedness. Yep. You've you've totally missed the point. This isn't for sale. Um, there's no exchange here. But what an opportunity now for the National Cathedral. So let's just let's just take a stupid stupid mistake, mm-hmm. and now they have a platform to say, um, let's talk about the free gift of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, it's a L- gift. Let's talk about the free gift of sacramental grace. Mm-hmm. We can talk about responsibility, mm-hmm. um, and we can talk about what it means to receive the sacrament. So if someone wanted to be baptized but had no, but couldn't, were not serious in the vows, then, you yep. know, that that's a reason to maybe say then you're, you're... Just hold off a minute. Just hold off. Um, same thing with marriages. If, mm-hmm. if, if you honestly aren't looking for God's blessing yeah. in, in, your, in your union and you're looking for a, a photo for the backdrop, house. there are all kinds of places you can get married. It's not Correct. the same thing. And, and you know, we do have the right to refuse marriages. Mm-hmm. We do have the right to counsel um, and, and baptisms and make that decision. Although, the, for, I mean, I believe, we believe in baptismal regeneration. We believe mm-hmm. something objectively happens Correct. in baptism. So... Even even if I'm not sure the parents are going to come to church, I still baptize. Mm-hmm. Um, but but they need to. I mean, we, you have to be a strong conversation about yeah. the vows you are making mm-hmm. um, with them. But what a good opportunity to to use this misstep and communicate really good news of lavish free grace mm-hmm. uh, to to the people of, of Washington and beyond, or mm-hmm. use this platform. I mean, everyone now. Everyone's going to be watching on social media mm-hmm. to see what's next. Take advantage of it yeah. and say, you know what? We were wrong, but here is what is right. Yeah. I think that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, imagine Christmas Day. You've been waiting to give this person this gift, and you're so excited. You know they're going to love it. And you give them the gift, and they unwrap it, and then they pull out their phone, and they say, okay, that was $79. Here's $79. For you. It totally takes away yeah. the point of the gift. I mean, it just neutralizes any grace there, any joy. Um, and so God's gift is a, a, a God's grace is a, is a gift to us. There is no price tag on that. And to try to nickel and dime people gives a bad impression. Have you seen any bishops comment anywhere I, on this? I mean, I haven't. I don't, I don't, I don't follow all of them. I haven't. Um, I actually, I saw, uh, um, I think down in Florida where I was ordained, I think, I think at least tweeting or something about it. So, um, uh, you know, I think people recognize that this this is bad luck. I think there needs to be some comment on this, so people don't get the wrong impression that this is okay. This is okay. Yeah, that this is not just simply an attempt to to um, recoup costs. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a niche um, topic mm-hmm. that we we we're bringing up because Correct. this is our world, and and perhaps no one else would have 
would have mm. noticed it. Um, you know, but even, oh, I don't, did you see the Episcopal News Service article mm. on this? I'm telling you, I don't mean to be ugly, but if I walked on water, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, had $2 million in my pocket and fed the poor, I would not get as positive an article from ENS <laughs> as the National Cathedral did. It was basically saying people were upset. Here's some comments on social media. However... And I just, I don't, I, that's, that's why. take this seriously. Yeah, that's why I think, yeah. that's why I think there needs to be a and, response to this. And, and let's pivot a little bit and, and talk about, um, you know, the, the image of the church you tweeted. I'm going to put that on the screen. Another aspect of this is the fact that um, the church is for everyone. Yes. And it is for the poor, especially. It is not for, and I understand you're thinking seven bucks. Most people could maybe scrounge that except for the exceptionally poor. But the principle of the matter is if you have $100, you're more likely to give $7 to this. If you have $10, it's going to hurt a little bit more. And so it's the principle of the matter that this is the church is for everyone. And so I'm going to put an image of, um, help me with the name, St. Albans Holborn. Holborn. Um, this is an image you tweeted, and um, it says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get close to read this, um, Free for, you're going to have to help me with the reading. Can you see it on the screen? Free forever. There you go. Uh, Free forever. um, The church is built to Christ poor. There you go, for Christ poor. So here's here's this church that came out of the Oxford movement. It's Mm -hmm. an Anglo-Catholic parish, has been from the beginning. It was endowed so that no one Mm -hmm. had to pay. That's right. Uh, in terms of you know pew rents and 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 things like that, free forever to Christ poor. This church is built and endowed in thanksgiving and thankful acknowledgement of His mercies by um, humble, humble stu- stewards of God's, God's bounty. bounty. Yeah, that's what's on the free on the facade, and that doesn't mean that people aren't encouraged to contribute and all that. But the actual building of the church, mm-hmm. not the maintenance, but the building of the church, was taken care of. For, and that's that's a mission statement. That's the mission this statement, and that's forever. that's really the Anglo-Catholic vision that we we create these beautiful, lavish spaces to communicate that what is contained mm-hmm. here is priceless. Yes, that's why the tabernacle is jeweled because yeah. the contents are priceless, yep. and it's yours for free for you forever because Jesus Christ has given Himself mm-hmm. to you, not because we are the ones that are controlling the dispensation mm-hmm. of who gets it and who That's does right. not. On that, we're stewards of it, but we, it's not ours to 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 quantify um, to quantify it's or a transaction. Certainly not to sell. Yeah. And so yeah. the idea that, I mean, that that is the theological statement that those poor people in Holborn um, in eighteen. 18- you know, 1840s, yep. were able to enter, uh, leave a, a Victorian world that was grimy, dusty, smoky, and gray and brown, and enter into this jewel box of, of, of a sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Like Macaulay Culkin, you know, yeah. going in yeah. to find a brief moment to find some peace. Mm-hmm. And for them to know that even though they don't have a dime to contribute, this is their home. Mm-hmm. And that's the statement. And that's why I get, I, I have to. Pray that my my patience gets gets um, longer mm-hmm. um, when people don't make the connection of beauty of worship and yeah. love of the poor. That's right. Those are not opposed yeah. at all. So this this church is uh, famous for their love of the poor and primarily for abolishing pew rents, um, which you know is similar to a little processing fee. It was, uh, you know, people, especially wealthy people, would rent their own pew in the church that when they showed up, they had their own little special spot and they didn't have to maybe interact with the people around them. And St. Alban uh, abolished them. And and I pulled out a couple descriptions of the church early on. And, you know, people would go and, and write about this church. And, you know, one of the descriptions said, the bonnetless and shoeless were in numbers amongst them. And as there are no pew rents and no appropriations, they were enabled to feel that they had as good of a right to the church as anybody else. Then another another man named W.E.J., that's the initials, said, um, one other reason, perhaps, why the poor were not easily distinguishable from their richer brethren is that the abominable pew system, now happily dying out, has never existed here. But the rich and the poor met together in the name of the Lord, for the Lord is the maker of all. And so, you know, even within our own Anglo-Catholic tradition, um, this has been a battle um, of, of constantly saying, build something beautiful, and it's not for the rich. It's for everybody. So get rid of the pew systems. Get rid of the processing fees. 
open the doors and let let rich and poor sit together and enjoy it together. Um, and there is a, a even a teaching formation element for the people in the pews there that um, you know you can very well imagine that a lot of the the wealthy people who went to this church probably never interacted with the poor except for this one two hours on Sunday morning where they were forced to sit next to them with no shoes and no bonnet. And that actually does something for the body of Christ, because if you force them to sit right next to them, it's hard to ignore them. It's hard to ignore their need. And so, you know, we got a little worked up on, on you know, a $7 processing fee, but it's because that is the end of a long history of similar things, uh, the end of a long history of simony that puts prices on God. And you know, I, I hope if we ever do anything remotely resembling this, we get called out for it. And and I pray that we would have enough, you know, humility to say, you're right, we messed up, um, and, and never again, and here's how we're going to fix it. And so, you know, that's what we hope, that's what we pray for, um, not just at the National Cathedral, but, but all over. Um, there is no price tag on, on God, and there's no price tag on the beauty of the church. You know, someone just, as we're talking, a uh, former parishioner sent me a, a link to the Episcopal News Service article. I'm mm-hmm. not sure what his point was, um, but, the, but the response to it is really justifying the cathedral. Uh, yeah. And it's, it just, it's just really, I think we're missing the greater point. The point is not that the church, you know, has you know, had an earthquake and is trying to rebuild and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. That's not the point. Yeah. That's the frustrating thing. Oh, well. Well, I was, I was trying to find if any bishops have said anything. Um, shout out to Bishop Brewer. He's liked tweets, you know, reprimanding them. He hasn't posted anything. But, um, you know, people are unhappy with it. Um, hopefully more people get unhappy with it, and, and hopefully we see some corrections. But um, any final thoughts on simony, simony? No, no, no. Um, other than we will never, ever, 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 ever come, we'll never charge. Yeah, and for and, a sacramental you know, as a side thing. note, I mean, it's just that's why it's so frustrating during COVID when we were forced to uh, have tickets for mass. Yeah. And obviously, we used Eventbrite and it was free. But the, even simply that illusion of having to go get a ticket for mass was so damaging yep. to our community. Yep. Um, that hurt. And we yep. we had to remind it: this is free. This is free. We're just forced to do this for COVID numbers. But that even resembles um, a purchase, and, and that, that, that was frustrating. And so, you know, we hope we never have to do that again, and we, we absolutely will never charge for, for Mass. No. All right, well, let's close with the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.